He was here not too long ago, man. We had a hat exclusive interview. Man, look that thing up on Instagram, Baker Man Bags, and uh, right here in the studio, man. His cameraman actually edited that thing up so wonderful, so well. Uh, yes, man. So make sure y'all check that out, Baker Man Bags, man, on Instagram. Hey, y'all, we're going to hop into it. I am Focus Feel the Focus Radio, man. Make sure y'all download that app, Win DC Radio. Simple as ABC, easy as one, two, three. I'm going to start the segment off today. Uh, I'm still waiting for some folks to arrive. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start the Bringing Our Children Home 5.0 segment uh, tonight. And you know what we do uh, here on Focus Radio. We bring a lot of awareness to the community and we get involved. So uh, just just last, well, no, not last week, just Wednesday, I want to say, no, Friday, I want to say um, what I did was I put some Unique Hers uh, flyers up. So I kind of like put them up. I kind of like took over the whole Landover area with that. And I kind of went down just to bring awareness to PG County with that. And um, I want to say shout out to Primo Liggas. Shout out to Primo Liggas, man, right there. Dodge Pop, man. Let me put one of those flies in the window. Uh, also, I want to say Pika's Printing Company. I want to give a shout out to them, man. They let me put a fly in the window. Also, uh, uh, Dodge Plaza, Dodge Park Barbershop, Cabro. Let me put a, a, a flat right there. So, man, I did some Facebook Live. Also, the convenience store. Uh, I don't know the name of the name of the store. It's like a dollar store, dollar store, dollar value, something like that. But um, she also let me put a, a flower in the building. So, shout out to them, man. Go out and get your goodies, man. Go to your, your liquor store and get your brews or whatever you do. Uh, tell them Focus Field, man, or Focus Radio sent you. The guy that put the flyer on the front window, if you're listening. So, um... Yeah, man, like I said, that was my week as far as with the Bringing Our Children Home 5.0. Also, uh, I will always be just passing out flyers, so anybody that wants to get wants to get me involved and want to have somebody out there really putting down the footwork out there, um, just hit me up, focusnews at gmail.com, feel focus on IG, and uh, catch me right here every Saturday, Focus Radio. Mr. Michael Mills, how you doing? I'm doing, man. How you doing, Phil? Man, I'm good. I'm good. Uh... You know, man, just holding on, and um, you know, I was linked with you, Mr. Muse, through uh, Hidden Salon. Yeah, I like to say number one, uh, number one activist. Yeah, you know, he is, man. Promoter, advocate, all of those things above, and um, heard about heard about your story mm -hmm. a while ago, right? And really didn't hear anything else about. Right. I didn't know you were still searching for Kristen. Right. He was your son. Um, that had went missing. And um with I like I like to bring people like you, Valencia Harris on, David Willow on, and um, also Henderson Long on because it's like you guys do everything on your own in the search of your children. Mm -hmm. And I really I really respect that. You know, because it's not you gotta open your own doors, and like I tell Miss Hurd every week, you just gotta keep fighting and keep fighting and keep fighting. And so many details and so many things come up, right? You know, like like five, six years later, mm -hmm. you know that we didn't know, like, right? That happened. Oh wow, we didn't know that was, you know, we didn't know. Yeah. So that's why I wanted to bring you here and also bring some awareness right. to Christian Muse. Yeah. You know, and also become an advocate for Christian Muse because kind of my side of town when that happened and I didn't even like I said I, I heard about mm -hmm. Crystal Muse Mr. Michael Muse son always hear your name yeah. but didn't know you know to the magnitude of it Right. and then uh, like I say with now it's like a lot of awareness is being brought and now Crystal Muse comes back up and you're still out here still, never stop. still missing yeah so um tell me a little bit Mr. Muse as far as with your son and what happened with the, the circumstances behind everything. Mm -hmm. Christian, he, he's actually a twin. Um, my daughter Milana is his twin sister. They came to live with me solely at the age of 14. Uh, my wife and I, my ex-wife and I had been divorced for some time and we kind of split the time up between the kids but when they turned 14, after their first year of, um, well, right around the end of the first year of high school, they were on the North Point in Waldorf. So. They uh, transferred to Oxen Hill, where they finished their ninth grade year. And, you know, Christian just kept getting in trouble, getting in trouble, getting in trouble. Smart kid, but he just kept getting in trouble. Um, you know, to make a long story short, they finished their, their three years, four years at Oxen Hill, and he graduated with honors. The boy was smart, man. Um, but between trying to 
go through the growing pains of the teenage years and becoming a young man and um, you know all the negative things that are out there that pull some of our young people down Christian had issues um, you know and then one day every time he would go out I would tell him to give me num a number of someone else I could get in touch with in case he didn't answer his phone that, that he would do uh, but this last day I saw him on July 12th July 15th of 2012 he went out around 10 o'clock at night, and I just said, send me a number. He said, I'll be back, and I haven't seen him since or heard his voice. Damn. I haven't seen him since. Strange thing about it, I immediately, after maybe, after filing the police report, maybe about two weeks it went past, I have a, a personal friend up at uh, Fox 5, and... and um, you know, he works the front desk, and I told them about the story and told them to try to push it. They wouldn't bite on it. What? Like, no news coverage at all. We didn't get news what? coverage until 16 months after Christian had disappeared. What? 16 months? 16 months. Channel 4 finally put out. A whole out, year, four months. Yep. Channel 4 finally put it on for 48 seconds. And that was in 2013, around the end of 2013. What was, what was the issue with that? I don't know, man. I mean, it, it just goes without saying. And, and you know what? I'm just going to put it out there. And I get this from my man Joe Madison, the Black Eagle, and it's so true. In America, we've been culturally conditioned to believe that white is superior and black is inferior. And the manifestations of that cultural conditioning is that black people are underestimated, undervalued, and marginalized. If Christian was a little white girl with blue eyes, it would have been no problem getting media coverage. And that's just, just the hardcore truth. Uh, they do look for elderly people and put that out there, and even maybe autistic children. Christian is a black male who had been in trouble with the law, uh, and it's just sad that even with the News Channel 4 segment, they ended it with when he went missing, he was on probation for robbery. How what? come they couldn't end it with he graduated with honors or he just finished some college courses, which is all true. What was, I don't even understand what the name you had to do with Exactly. That's what I'm saying. People go missing, all types of people go missing. Exactly. As, you know, but it's that's... News, I am called to hear that. That is really... That's, that's why I'm glad I got you here. We, yeah. I, I, I wouldn't have thought that. Right, right. And so you just kept pushing it and then it got... I, I kept pushing it and, you know, but it's this thing called life that gets in the way of everything. You know, even though your child is missing, you still got to pay the bills. I'm still a single parent. My daughter still lives with me. Uh, my oldest son has come back home. Uh, honestly, this thing has taken its toll on me. It's affected my health. Two years ago, I found out I had heart disease. Worrying, 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 and getting older will break you down. And, you know, you got to take care of yourself. And between all of that and trying to make ends meet and keep a roof over our head, Looking for Christian kind of gets pushed back on the wayside, and the rumors are so vast. I mean, we've heard everything from that he's hiding out in District Heights to he's in California doing pornography to he's buried in Arizona in the woods. I mean, the, the you know, to he was seen right around the corner. So where do you start with those so many vast rumors? You just don't know where to start. You know? And the police, you know... <laughs> They haven't done anything. You know, they, they, they ask me more questions. Do you, have you heard anything? Have you heard anything? Now, what have you heard? You know, what, what are you doing to try to find my son? You know, it's Prince George's County. Prince George's County, District 4. But sadly, and I must say this, I, I, I got to find a way to reach out to some city council or some county councilmen in, in PG County because what I found out, and this is really terrifying, in District 4 where I live, Oxon Hill, Fort Washington, I think four even encompasses some parts of maybe Temple Hill, Suitland, I'm not sure. But there's only one detective in that whole district that handles missing person cases. She has no staff, she has no partner, all she has is her and her supervisor. And she handles all the missing person cases in the whole district four. So I can't be mad at her, you know what I mean? What a caseload she must have. But see, that's county legislation needs to get more funding yeah. in that area, especially now. Yeah, you know, especially now. Wow. So you have just been just basically doing, still doing everything on your own. Everything I can, man. Everything I, you can. 
throwing vigils. We had two candlelight vigils. The first one is, is when uh, the news actually came, Channel 4, 16 months. I had another one uh, a few months ago. But the longer it goes on, the more people seem disinterested in it. I put up a um, GoFundMe campaign to try to raise money as a reward for anyone leading with some information to his whereabouts because it's strange how when someone sees $100,000, automatically they know something. Uh-huh. But I got, you know, and God bless them, I got a lot of prayer warriors in my corner. Well, I'll pray for you, I'll pray for you, I'll pray. But my thing about prayer, faith without works is dead. If my house is on fire and you just praying for me and you standing beside a fire truck and you ain't turning the hoses on, you ain't doing me no good. Hmm. You keep praying all day, my house gonna burn down. Mm. So what I say is that if you can donate a dollar, if you can donate five dollars, you would be amazed how fast that builds up. And as soon as that reaches a hundred thousand dollars, somebody gonna know something. Somebody gonna know something. But if you wanna just keep praying, that's fine too. You know? So that's why so I have a, a go go fund me. Go fund so me what's, campaign. What's the, what's the name of it? It's called Four Years Missing. Oh, four years. Listen. Yeah, all you gotta do is go to GoFundMe and type in my name or Christian's name, and it'll uh-huh. come right up. Hmm. It'll come right up. And that's been up now for about close to two years, and we've accumulated about fifteen hundred dollars in two years. But you know, and and, and I, again, I I love my people, I love my prayer warriors, but it's funny when you watch the news, and they do a story about some bear in Nebraska walking on his hind legs. And they find out that the reason he was doing that was because he had hurt.